I see. Oh, I'm, I'm happy for you. I'm completely and utterly ha happy for you. I just... Sorry. Sarah's on the phone. Tell her I'll be on to her soon. Yeah, she's in meeting all day, so... I'll call her back. Tell her when Ellie's done here. Right. Sorry, could we just go from uh, no, I'm happy for you? No, I'm happy for you. Yeah, no, I'm happy for you. But sorry, could you just be a bit more sad? More sad? Yeah. Okay. No, I'm, I'm, I'm happy for you. I, I just feel. Yeah, that you know what? I uh, think we're good. Thanks. I, I could maybe be more angry. No, or... no, that's fine. I've, uh, I've got to run. Thanks for coming in, man. It's, it's Mia. Thanks, thank, thank you for your time. You ungrateful fucking bitch. Could you be more sad, please? Could you be more fu- What am I like? I'll have the camera rolling. Mind yourself, Harry. Yeah. Hey, go easy on the AIDS, yeah? <laughs> Try my best. <laughs> you should have come, man. I know. Fucking passport, man. <laughs> <laughs> that is shocking. I hear you always have a place to go, like. Only ever a click. Go on. Take a hoik fuckhead. <laughs> Take a hoik fuckhead. Yeah, you told me not to say anything about the honeymoon or the pet store or the tattoos, so what was I supposed to do? Like, lie to your parents? Oh, God forbid. Like, that's the worst thing you've ever done. Oh, wow, you think you're such a free spirit because you checked up with me last few months. I've been living like this my whole life, okay? Last 25 years. I will look 60 when I'm 40. Yeah, you will. <laughs> but, but you know why? Because I'll be full of experiences. You? You actually disgust me. I disgust you? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Wow. You didn't look so disgusted when you were spending all of my money, did you? <laughs> it's just money. You think that I think it was an accident that you ended up with the only fucking finance guy who made money after the crash. Give it to me in, in bold strokes, Bart. I'm sitting in the audience. The lights go down. The Capital logo comes up. You're on. Can I be honest with you, Mr. Lipnick? Can you? You damn well better be. Well, to be honest, I don't really like to discuss the project that's still in progress. Yeah, Bart, I, I think you should tell me anyway. Yes, sir, I'm sorry. This, I don't want this to be another wrestling picture. This is a story about a man wrestling with his own internal struggle. The, the poetry is about the fight within himself. This is a wrestling picture. The audience want to see wrestling action and plenty of it. They don't want to see some fruity piece of shit about some guy wrestling with his soul. I think it's the best work I've done. Oh, don't bullshit me, Fink. If your opinion mattered, I'd resign and let you run things here. Think blood, sweat, canvas, big movies. Think about big men in tights, both, both physically and mentally, but especially physically. Now that... Now, that is writing. Now, where are the fights? Oh, forget about the fights. I'm trying to show you oh, something. Jesus, you arrogant son of a bitch! I watched them most carefully and realized his attachment was much deeper than hers. That's just because she's shy. Bingley, too, is modest and was persuaded that she did not feel strongly for him. Persuaded by you? My sister Hardy shows her true emotions to me. No doubt his fortune had some bearing on the matter. No. There was, however, I have to admit, the issue of your family. It was the lack of propriety shown by your mother, your three younger sisters, and even on occasion your father. I knew. I knew from the... I knew from the moment I met you that your arrogance, your conceit, and your selfish disdain for the feelings of others meant you are the last man on this planet I would ever be prevailed to marry. Now, 
I'll pretend to be Darla, and you just go for it, just like we rehearsed. Darla, you and I are like two hearts with one beat, two brains with one thought, two souls with one shoe. Good, good. Now don't forget what else we talked about. Remember, you're not like those other guys. I'm not like those other guys. Good. I'm a sensitive male. And what are you into? I'm into sharing, caring, feeling and healing. Mm-hmm. I'm in touch with my feminine side. Good. Very good. Nope. I am not very bright at all. Ah, don't say that. Well, no, because if I had any brains at all, I wouldn't be on this stupid train in this stupid girl's band. Do you know I used to sing with male bands? Can't afford it anymore. What are you on about? You see, that's what I'm running away from. Do you know I've been with six bands in the last two years? Rough. Yeah. And I just can't help myself. Jesus Christ. And do you know what it is? I have this really weird thing for guitar players. Like, I don't know what it is about them, but they just make me insides cordial. Like, all they have to do is play a couple of chords off Wonderwall and my spine, it turns to like jelly and I get all goose pimply all over. And I'll go to them. Every single time I'll go to them. Jesus Christ, it doesn't take much for you though, does it? Do you know what? They don't even have to buy me dinner first. This is Andy, father. How are you, son? Hi, father. Uh, you don't have to do that. I'm, I'm not the Pope. No. No. Uh, that's just old habits that I have. Uh, my old priest used to make me kiss him on the ring, on the finger. Uh, I'm not saying priests are perverts or anything like that. Far from it, I think. I've never been touched by a priest. I've been touched by God, though. Not like that now, but in my heart, I have. Who was your confirmation saint? Mine. Um, saint Bernard. Saint Bernard. And who was your priest growing up? Father Michael O'Flatley. Michael Flatley? No, O'Flatley. Look, Hel, Harvey told us about what you got up to in the bathroom. Yeah, I'm sure he did. Yeah, and look, we're your mates. And I know you've got a problem right now, but we're going to help you through it. And in a year's time, we're going to look back on this and we're going to fucking laugh yeah, about this it. this is really funny. This is hilarious. You know what I mean? Don't touch me. I don't understand why you keep touching me. You're really pissing me off. Kelly, we love you because we go way back, don't we? Tell me something. Tell me how far you and me go back. What, so you think you really know me? Yeah, I'd like to think Mate, so. Mate, I don't even know what's fucking going on up here, so if I don't know, how the fuck would you know? Stop telling me that you know me, because you fucking don't. All right, and let me tell you something else. If I want to take something to get rid of all the shit that's going off, uh, just be a mate and let me do it. Because that's what I do for you. My sister's name is Mary, and she gets all the songs. And I get one. No, uh, you get two. What's the other one? Deborah. What am I just talking about? Yeah, but who by? Uh, Trex. T Rex? Yeah. Yeah, sorry, T Rex. Oh, um. Uh, I don't know it. How does it go? Oh, Deborah. Always looking like a zebra. Da 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 da. <laughs> a zebra? Oh, zebra, I guess you could say. Oh, well, I'm wearing black and white, so you can call me Zebra. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. Very simple, very truly. Well, fuck you. What? That was so unfair. You know how unfair that was. Well, it's unfair because I love you. No, it...
it's unfortunate that you love me. It's unfair that you felt the need to unburden your fucking soul about it. I mean, do you forget for a second who I am? P people change. Is, is that simple, yeah? You fall in love with me and you want a romantic relationship and everything's fantastic. But what about me? It's not that simple. I can't just get into a relationship with you without throwing my whole fucking world into upheaval. But like every relationship, there's, there's periods of adjustment. Per periods of adjustment? There's no period of adjustment, Holden. I'm fucking gay. That's who I am. So on the first day of first year, these three big second year jocks come up to me and start picking on me. And Brad walks in, fists flying, run over to them, ready to take them on all on his own. Sounds like Brad. Yeah, <laughs> they kicked his ass. <laughs> also sounds like Brad. And he got suspended for a week, went home, and then his dad kicked his ass. A week later, he comes back, you know, sees the same three jocks picking on me again, and decides he's going to take them on all over again. Some things never change. He got his ass kicked again by them and by his dad. But you know, he did it anyway, because if Brad believes in something, he never stops fighting for it. Where is Tom? You know what, you've just, you've just taken everything away from me. You took my job, you took my respect, and what, could it be now that you're trying to make everyone think that I'm crazy, so that you can take away my son? Where is Tom? No, no, I don't, you know what, I don't know. Because maybe I, I had to do something to protect him. So that he will not have to grow up to be someone like you. What, what do you mean? Because if, if it's true, and all men are just led by their in desire to fuck anything they want, then why would I want my son to grow up to be like this? People will ask questions, you know. Who made you do that? How is this allowed to happen? Where were the friends? Where was the family? Maybe I am mad. But what is it that makes us mad for each other? I mean, obviously we have to have similar interests and goals in common. Don't forget physical attraction. Yeah, well, that's a given. But my ex-wife had all those things and our marriage was an unmitigated disaster. She so. probably just didn't appreciate you. No, not entirely. I guess what it really comes down to is what is that special thing that makes us both cry out? Yes, you're supposed to be together. Who knows? All that matters is that you feel it too. I should have told you how I felt months ago, but I was just too insecure. I never dreamed that you could believe that I could ever be with David. Uh, David? You're, you're talking about David? Yeah. <laughs> Of course I'm talking about David. You're such a joker. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what I was doing. I was joking. Sense of humour. That's another thing. Yeah. That's me. Always being funny. Randall Patrick McMurphy. It says here you've got at least five arrests for assault. What can you tell me about that? Uh, so you fight. Um, like you see that Conor McGregor is like what twenty five fights. I look at him; he's a millionaire. Like I mean, it says here that you went in for statutory rape. Yeah. What do you have to say about that? Yeah. Um, okay. Look, she was she was sixteen years old going on. 27, you know what I mean? And she told me she was 18, like, and I mean, she was very willing. She, you know, she gave me full consent. I mean, what else was I gonna do, do you know? I mean, just, just sit there and sew my pants shut? Nah, like, I mean, but I mean, between you and me, I mean, like, yeah, she might've been 16 and all that, but like, once you get that, like, red beaver right up there in front of you, you know, what else am I gonna do, do you know? I mean, like, I don't think that's crazy. I, I don't think you do either. 
studying is hard and boring and teaching is hard and boring so what you're telling me is to be bored and then bored again and then finally bored again but this time for the rest of my life this whole country is bored there's no life in it or colour or fun it's just as well the Russians are going to drop a nuclear bomb on us any day now so what you're telling me is to do something hard and boring or marry my Jew and go to Paris and Rome and listen to jazz and eat good food in nice restaurants and have fun. You know, it's... It's not enough to educate us anymore, Miss Walters. You've got to tell us why we're doing it. Tell me, who's in charge of creating the image of the Holy Father? The Secretary of State entrusted this delicate task to me, Holy Father, two years ago. Very good. Now I'm going to tell you what you, as creator of the image of the Holy Father, are going to do. You're going to fire the Vatican's official photographer immediately. No photographs of the Pope are to be issued. You know why? I never allow my photograph to be taken. And whenever anybody tried to sneak a photograph of me, I always bought them up before they could be published. Come to think of it, I've been training my whole life to be an invisible pope. And so, for my first address, you will see to it that the lighting is so dim, no cameraman, no TV crew, and not even the faithful will see anything of me but a dark shadow, my silhouette. They will not see me because I do not exist. I am no one. I know back at the bar there I seemed really confident, but that was just mostly because I was cold and wet and trying to be dramatic. <sighs> okay, okay. So this is happening. So, like, logistically, what do we do now? Like, what's your big move? What do you mean, what's my move? Like, what's your, what's your move? You're not ready for the move. No way. Yeah, I am. Tell me your move. You're not ready for the move. You're not going to get it. No way. Not a chance. Tell me your move. I work dirty dancing into the conversation. Dirty dancing? Mm. What do we do? Do we watch it? No. The move at the end of the film, I can do that. I stick on the song, do the move, and they, well, they always want to have sex. Well, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard in my life. I agree. But it works every time. <laughs> well, it wouldn't work on me. Oh God, are you all right? Not according to the Times, I'm not. Did you read the Times? The Times said, Elliot Garfield Richard, researched Richard III and discovered him to be England's first Badly dressed interior decorator. I never listened to the critics. Thank God. You can go on for me then tomorrow night. Daily News. Here. Uh, it, it never occurred to us It that... never occurred to us that William Shakespeare wrote The Wizard of Oz. Uh, however, Elliot Garfield made a very convincing Wicked Witch of the North. It's tacky. Uh, they're going to kill me. They're going to kill me with uh, panache. Go to bed. You think I'm disappointed? You think I'm discouraged about 14 negative reviews? You bet your ass, baby. I thought you were really good. I was an Elizabethan fruit fly. I was the Betty Boop of Stratford-on-Avon. Take me, for example. You don't know me. No. I'm just a girl assembled in here, right? But who's to say by tomorrow that you and me couldn't? Right, and I'm not coming on, Jet Rotten. But who's to say we couldn't be head over heels dancing in the green? Nobody. Why? Because when there's something there. The chemistry. Yeah. Who's to say with the sparks are late? A girl like me could be just a bit of fun of the sack, nothing more. Or, and it's not that crazy, you're so me. Yeah, you've got a point. On the other hand, I could just be thief or something. 
What do you mean? Just some vellum. Just waiting for the right time to... Smack your jaw and rob the register. Because that's the thing, you see. You just never know what's going to happen. This therapy is a waste of time. You know it and I know it. I actually don't know it, but please continue. It's a waste of time. Yeah, you said that. Yeah. It's miserable fucking existence. And my putrid fucking genes have infected my kid's soul. That's my gift to my son. I know this is difficult, but I'm very glad we're talking about this. Really? Because I think it fucking stinks. What does? This therapy! I fucking hate this shit! Seriously, we're adults, all right? When all is said and done, and all the complaining and the crying and all the bullshit, is this all there is? I don't see the point. In relationships? Well, to me, they don't seem realistic. Are you serious? I mean... Yeah. I am, really. Well, then, you know, why are we here? If it doesn't... If we don't matter to each other, then... Well... Like, why are you here? Well, I heard the food's supposed to be really great here. No. No, no, no. I mean, I just mean, you know, one person for the rest of your life. I mean, that's... I mean, you go to restaurants, you come to a restaurant like this and you see couples sitting together, they don't speak to each other, they don't have one word to say to each other. They don't say anything. They don't have anything. What was it like? Was it like, like, please, fuck my wife? Please. We talked about other things. Oh, you talked about other things. Oh, good. G good, I'm glad. It sounds like a riveting afternoon. Did you put out snacks? Were you a good host? Did you? Because you guys must have been fucking famished after all that fucking horse trading. Well, we pretty much drank our dinner. Was there stipulations on the fucking? Hmm? Was it, was it like, were, did you tell him, don't do it, man, she doesn't like anal, just, just dog, doggy style is preferable? When, yeah. uh, when the fuck did I become the bad guy in this? You wanted my permission, I gave it to you. I didn't ask for your permission. You gave Dick fucking permission to fuck me. That's what happened. Did you do it? Take a look at page 20. Yeah, I don't need that. What? I don't need the script. How could you possibly know all the lines? Come on, let's just give me the cue again. I'm the wrong person to ask. I wouldn't... Sorry. Stop you again there, my apologies. Um, I'm the wrong person to ask. See, that, that, that's, a, that's another fuck you. That's like, don't put me on the spot. Don't make me feel self-conscious. But my marriage, my wife is sitting right there. You know, it's a fuck you. Give it to me as a, as a fuck you. Okay, let's just let me... Uh, Sorry, just fucking give it to me right now. Fuck me right now, right here. Let's do it. Okay, yeah. I, uh... Fucking do it. Hey, I'm the wrong person to ask, okay? I don't even know the guy, so what's your point? That, that love is an absolute. Yeah, all right. The kind of love I'm talking about is an absolute. The kind of love I'm talking about, you... Well, you don't try to kill people. When did you get the car? Oh, I just got it yesterday. Sweet. Yeah. Nice. Are you sure? Like, man, you can drive if you want. Just a few minutes, like. Well, how much time do we have left? Like, I don't want to miss... Oh, the... uh, uh, like six minutes? Oh. Well, I don't want to be late, like, so... Yeah, Maybe. no, cool, yeah. cool. Um, oh, shit, man, sorry, you got, like, something there. Yeah? yeah. Where? No, oh, it's just, yeah, cool. Okay. Is it gone? Yeah.
I'm sorry, I don't know why I did that. What? I'm oh, sorry, man. You just, it's, it's just, you look at me sometimes and I think like... Scotty! What? Do you like me? Yeah, I like you, Scotty, but... Can I please kiss you again, please? No, no. Please? No. Did you come here for sex? No. Then why? To tell you I know you kept the gun. Well, why would I do that? Because you can't help yourself. And how did you arrive at this diagnosis? You see, you think you're unique, but so does everyone else with your disorder. You're all unique in exactly the same way. Wouldn't it make things easy for you if that were true, but it's not. Keep me up wasn't a rational decision. It was a compulsion. Something you did because you needed to. That compulsion is gonna break you in ways you can't see and understand. It's gonna bring you down. Are you threatening me? Because honestly, I wouldn't. And why is that? Come now, really. Because I'd be hurt and angry. Are you trying to frighten me now? Why are you frightened? Because I don't think you'd do that unless you were scared. And I don't think you'd be scared unless you thought I might be right. That was some serious fucking last night. Yeah. <laughs> that was a big fucking... Yeah, your penis is, it's not big, but it's really nice. Thank you. Really nice. Yeah, take that. It's fine. That's fine. It's a nice little penis. It's no, that's not what nice. I said. Yeah, you've um, you have. A, it's a really nice pussy. Thank you. It's very very nice. Thank you. I picked it out myself. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I had it put in ten years ago where my dick used to be. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You're wondering if I'm kidding. <laughs> no. No, I'm not, I'm not, I know you're kidding, like I'm not worried if... Why would you be worried? Um, <clears throat> you mean if you were a... If I was a woman? You are a woman. Yeah. Yeah, you're not a man. No. Oh. We had sex. Yes, yes, great, good, yes. Why, why couldn't you have just said that? What? You didn't want to say it. Okay, fine. You you were inside of me. You were inside yeah, of me. Yeah, I'm aware of that. Yeah, okay, good. Good, so you do remember it then. Yeah, that, well, that is a part of it. Yes, it is. And that is when a man and a woman, a man is inside the woman. Yeah, okay, good. Yeah, so, so that meant something, did it not? Absolutely. Okay, what did it mean to you? It meant that I had a wonderful time. A wonderful time. Good, 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 great, because, because I like you could, and Could you and just I... keep it down because there's someone over there. Well look, I like you and I, I think I have an emotional connection to you and I would like to explore that, okay? I don't have sex with just, just anyone, you know, and, and I mean like do you, do you just go and have sex with just anyone? Excuse me? Do you, do you just go and have sex with lots of random women? I think that's a pretty personal question, to be well, quite honest Well, so with you. is being inside of me. You know, that's pretty private, I see, so... I see no correlation between I'm asking, is this something you do often? Do you, do you just go and have sex with random women that you don't know very often and take them home and be inside of them? I'm not sure. You're not sure? Do you, know, do you not remember them? No, I do, I do. Do you know their names? Yeah, of All course. of them? Yeah. Always? Always. Okay, well, uh, what's my name? Of course I know your name. Okay, good. What is it? Your name is... Annie. 